new platform, new technologies and new powertrains for the Lexus RX350 large luxury SUV. No pressure for Lexus to perform against some well-ingrained competitors, then. 2023 Lexus RX350 F Sport. It used to be all about luxury sedans and limousines as the archetypal and most sought-after versions of luxury vehicles. But just like the mainstream parts of the automotive landscape, luxury and premium buyers now prefer an SUV over a regular sedan. It makes sense, then, that large SUVs are now seen as the most important offering for luxury brands like Lexus. And so for this Japanese brand, the new generation 2023 Lexus RX becomes highly important for the brand and bottom line. In this review, we are sampling a 2023 Lexus RX 350F Sport priced from $99,900 before on-road costs. This new generation model takes over from a model that dates back to 2015 and represents a big move for Lexus. It no longer has the option of a petrol V6, which was a mainstay of the range for decades. Instead, there is a choice of hybrid and turbocharged four-cylinder options. There's even a top-spec option of a turbocharged hybrid powertrain, a first for Lexus and beating parent company Toyota to the punch in Australia. It's also built atop a new for RX a global air platform architecture called TNGAK, already in use underpinning the smaller Lexus NX, which promises to be stiffer, more responsive, as well as increasing comfort and refinement. However, what we've got here is a non-hybrid powertrain with a sporting edge that could be the sweet spot for some buyers. Let's have a closer look. How much does the Lexus RX 350F Sport cost in Australia? Sneaking in just below the six-figure mark, as a starting point, is this 2023 Lexus RX 350F Sport. Priced from $99,900 before options and on-road costs, a tester has been bolstered with the optional $3,000 enhancement pack and premium paint for an asking price of around $104,000 before you include on-road costs. F-Sport is seen as a mildly sporty choice of the bunch, picking up adaptive variable suspension components, larger 400mm ventilated brakes with 6-piston calipers, and 21-inch alloy wheels. However, the most performance-oriented RX in the range is the most expensive, RX 500 HF Sport performance at $126,000 plus on-road costs. What we have got here, though, is something on the lower side of the spectrum. Whereas the new 2023 Lexus RX range kicks off at $87,500 for a RX 350h luxury in two-wheel drive guys, a tester costs over $10,000 more. And while that base model is loaded with standard specification, such a thoroughly Lexus thing to do, there are some meaningful upgrades on this more expensive model. Adaptive high-beam bi-LED headlights, with three projectors and dynamic automatic leveling, 21-inch alloy wheels, upgraded brakes and adaptive dampers, a powered tailgate, with kick sensor, heated and ventilated F-Sport seats, 21-speaker Mark Levinson sound system, wireless phone charging, rear door sunshades and a 360-degree camera system. There's also a variety of smaller interior and exterior upgrades. How much space does the Lexus RX 350F Sport have inside? The Lexus RX has always been a nice place on the inside, loaded with nice materials and feeling rock solid. However, the previous model also did feel a bit daggy and dated in comparison to the competition. That's all changed in this iteration of the Lexus RX. It's still a relatively conservative take on things, with a largely traditional layout of buttons, screens and storage. The interior is no doubt dominated by that massive infotainment display, with the gigantic black plastic slab connecting up to the instrument cluster on the side and air conditioning controls below. It's a simpler, less busy design in comparison to the old model, finished off smartly by some nice and interesting materials. It's just about all soft touch, with stamped suede and metallic finishes marrying up nicely. Thankfully, Lexus has chosen not to go all guns blazing on piano black, instead opting for some contrasting and patterned textures around the cabin, including a real aluminium finish in front of the passenger, and around the cup holders and gear selector. The touchpad infotainment control has been axed, hooray, which frees up space around the gear shifter. Practicality is covered by two cup holders in the middle, along with a lidded section that hides a wireless charging pad and additional storage cubby. The center console is well-sized and hides an additional two USB-C power outlets. On top of the USB-A, USB-C and 12V outlets up front, you are well covered for power. The seats are impressively comfortable, with nice materials and loads of adjustment on offer. One can up the ante here with semi-aniline seats in higher specifications, but for my money the F-Sports leather-trimmed seats are quite impressive both in terms of finish and function.
Opening and closing the doors now comes from an electromechanical switch rather than a mechanical lever. It works well, especially when you realize you only need to press the button gently and it pops open, though first timers may instead use the door release in a more tradition pull to open function, which serves as the emergency release. It's elegant and different, although some might miss the mechanical connection you get with a traditional door lever. In the back, there is a good amount of space on offer for second row occupants. There's loads of legroom and headroom, along with a smart full-size sunroof that reaches into the back area. Visibility is good in the second row, and the boxes of air vents, USB power outlets and window blinds are all ticked. For kids, family or VIPs in the back seat, I doubt you'd get much in terms of serious complaints. The boot, with no third row to compromise things, is plenty spacious as well. There's 612L available in the storage compartment, which is more than enough for weekends way. It has a flat load lip and some tie-down points, along with some extra space below the floor. There's no full-size spare underneath, however. You've got a space saver spare in this case, while luxury and sports luxury models get a tire repair kit. Does the Lexus RX 350F Sport have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? The 14.0-inch infotainment display is both huge and well endowed with features like smartphone mirroring and just about anything else you would want. This new system comes with Halexus functionality for a wide variety of demands, along with Apple CarPlay, wired and wireless, and Android Auto, wired only. There's also navigation and digital radio, as well as Alexis connected services for assistance in the event of a breakdown, accident or vehicle theft. The operating system is simple and clean, helped by the massive screen that is not short on clarity or responsiveness. It's perhaps not as intuitive an operating system as some of the best out there, but it is good regardless in terms of not feeling overly complicated or deep. The driver's instrument cluster is digital, but centers around a tachometer with some other basic readouts, flanked by segmented fuel and temp info, rather than being a full-on customizable digital display of its own. One will notice the small bar on the top of the steering column that keeps an eye on the driver, while there is also a head-up display that can be configured with different readouts. Perhaps this is a complaint that only affects me and my driving habits, but I found the touch-sensitive buttons on the steering wheel to be distracting while driving. Grazing them, or touching them accidentally, will show up in the head-up display, and a concerted press without any previous touch will require an additional hit to work, when skipping a song for example. It feels to me to be extra complicated for no good reason, and does distract from driving. But maybe that's just because I've got busy hands, tapping and moving around while driving. Is the Lexus RX 350F Sport a safe car? The Lexus RX range received a 5-star ANCAP safety score when tested in 2022, which is an important, and challenging, box to tick these days. At top of the full 5 stars, the Lexus RX scored 90% for adult occupant protection and 89% for child occupant protection. Vulnerable road users get a 89% protection score, and the safety assist systems rate at 93%. What safety technology does the Lexus RX 350F Sport have? One major element of the 5-star ANCAP safety score is no doubt thanks to the mini airbags installed in the cabin of the Lexus RX. There are dual front, side and curtain airbags, as well as a driver's knee and front center unit for eight in total. Other safety equipment, with there being no shortage in the old generation model, has been bumped and tweaked with this new model. Autonomous emergency braking can now detect junctions as well as pedestrians, motorcycles and cyclists in day and night situations. There's also traffic sign recognition, lane departure warnings, and a reworked lane centering system, evasive steering assistance, front and rear cross-traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, and safe exit assistance all get a run in this new model. Driver monitoring will keep an eye on fatigue levels, with the system able to bring the vehicle to a stop if the driver becomes unresponsive, but can also recognize the driver's face for a range of preset conditions and settings. How much does the Lexus RX 350F Sport cost to maintain? There is a flat rate of $695 per year for maintaining your Lexus RX over the first five years, which doesn't change regardless of what kind of powertrain you've got under the bonnet, or how many wheels are driven. The vehicle comes with three years of Lexus Encore membership, which comes with a wide variety of benefits, events and invites. It also has a 24-hour roadside assistance and breakdown service. Insuring a Lexus RX 350F Sport is set at $3,283.91 per year which includes the optional $3,000 enhancement pack. This is based on a comparative quote for a 35-year-old male driver living in Chatswood, NSW.
insurance estimates may vary based on your location, driving history, and personal circumstances. Is the Lexus RX 350F sport fuel efficient? We saw an average of 9.0 litres per 100 kilometres, which is quite commendable for a turbocharged petrol engine in an all-wheel drive SUV of this size. However, it also works out to be the least efficient of the model lineup. No surprise considering the rest of the range is hybrid. Whereas this RX 350 has a claimed fuel economy of 8.7 L to 100 km, claimed fuel economy is as good as 5.0 L to 100 km on the base front-wheel drive RX 350H, while the performance-oriented, also hybrid, RX 500H gets a claim of 6.5 L to 100 km. It's also worth noting that our own fuel usage as close to the claim as it might have been was gathered during a drive cycle that was relatively heavy on highway driving. It wasn't purely motorways, we did spend some time tootling around town. But we also did a few big stints around the 100 km per hour mark, which can be a little overly complimentary on indicated fuel usage. What is the Lexus RX 350F Sport like to drive? Previously on the Lexus RX range, seeing the 350 name on the back would indicate AV6, but now it's a 2.4-litre four-cylinder turbo petrol engine with 205 kilowatts and 430 newton meters. The new range of engines that Toyota calls Dynamic Force. It's a representation of how far technology has come that this smaller engine, with the help of forced induction, feels markedly similar to something nearly double its capacity. I'm guessing this new engine, coded T24A, FDS, was benchmarked against the outgoing, well-loved and long-serving 2GR petrol V6, because it feels in some ways, similar in its power and torque delivery. There's less need here for the transmission to downshift on acceleration because torque is both more plentiful and available at lower revs. While it might miss out on that fleeting lusty feeling as it chases the red line, it feels like a better engine for the application overall. The only negative for me would be that under load and working hard, it sounds a bit regular. Like a Camry or Corolla might, without any sense of premium sportiness that the rest of the car implies. The ride quality of the Lexus RX 350F Sport in its normal mode is unapologetically very soft. It works well, offering great comfort and insulation from rough road surfaces around town. There is also a good level of noise insulation, aside from the slightly buzzy motor I mentioned earlier. That soft, new wallowing ride is matched to a sharp steering feel, which is keen and eager as it moves off center and offers plenty for the driver through corners. This might be a mismatch, but it actually works well overall. The RX steers and holds its own nicely through corners, especially considering the size, but that soft feeling suspension can yield some bump steer if you encounter something like a reasonably large dip mid-corner. The adaptive damping of the F-Sport model does allow the suspension to firm up noticeably, but it also means you lose out on that buttery soft ride quality for the rest of the time. It's not bad, but it adds a small dose of business that otherwise isn't there. Your best bet is to cast aside any pretensions of corner carving, and instead enjoy that impressive ride quality and serene level of noise insulation. Should I buy a Lexus RX 350F Sport? Despite the F Sport moniker, this Lexus RX isn't an outright sporting choice. But it shouldn't be either, and its strengths lie in other parts of the game. It's comfortable and premium, feeling well made and engineered overall. And let's be honest, they're the most important elements to nail in a car like this. There's loads of tech, but it doesn't fall into the trap of being too intrusive or counterproductive, which is very important also. Opting for hybrid power will likely make more sense for most buyers, especially if you're looking to save on fuel and running costs around town and in urban areas. However, this new turbocharged petrol engine, which is also used in a less potent tune in the new Toyota Kluger, acquitted itself quite well. Being a bit less revvy than the outgoing V6 is helpful, and it seemed to be a little better on fuel as well. Plus, it's smooth and seamless through the 8-speed automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive system. Ride comfort is the jewel in the crown here, but it's bolstered by high levels of interior comfort, good technology integration, and a smooth, refined powertrain. And while the Toyota-born bones might not sound like a premium starting point, the end product begs to differ.